Hello, hello, and welcome to another tea break with me, Tasha. Cheers to you. I thought today would be the perfect opportunity for a tidy up tea break and a way to tie into some of the previous tea breaks that we've had about online security and equality, or rather the lack of online security and equality. And it also, it ties in with the filling part of my blog post sandwich that I made on Tuesday too, at www.goodgreekgalaxy.com. Today's tea break is all about algorithms. Why? Because algorithms are a huge part of online safety and yet seem to have been missed out completely. It's true, perhaps I've missed the part of current legislation that covers it all. And if that is the case, then please let me know for sure. The algorithm doesn't seem to have been considered in any digital legislation whatsoever at the current time. Not that I can find anyway. And the fact that neither the European Digital Safety Act nor the UK Online Safety Bill includes any legislation whatsoever with regards to the algorithm is, well, it's a bit of a joke, or at least from the point of view that you have to laugh or you'd cry. Surely, as the algorithm is responsible for everything, I mean, it really is running the show when it comes to on the online world. It should have come first. It should be completely woven into the current approved legislation we have already at this moment in time. So first things first, let's start with what an algorithm is. Tea break style, of course, or we'll be here for far too long. And I'm not an algorithm genius. So in layman's terms, an algorithm is simply a set of programmed commands. Programmed commands by a human into a computer. Commands or rules that must be followed by that computer, that computer program. And of course, the fact that an algorithm is programmed by a human means it's not infallible means that it can be biased or skewed depending on the rules, the parameters that the human programming it has put into it in the first place. The fact that the instructions need to be inputted also means that the appropriate laws and legislations should have been programmed in at the same time. So whatever the subject is, the laws should have been programmed in at the same time. This is a huge consideration for our media feeds as we live in a time of misinformation, malinformation, fake news. So whether this oversight has been a deliberate error or a simple oversight is not the topic of discussion for today. No conspiracy here. What is really clear is that where there are laws and legislations already enacted and in use in the real world, then these same laws and legislations and parameters should automatically also be programmed into any algorithm. Algorithmic fact checking is a great example and would work really well if the correct principles and laws and facts were programmed in and not just a specific set of known good and bad facts. This is quite important because quite important questions and items for debate and discussion um, can disappear from online and those questions and issues for discussion may have been really, really important. And so we don't want them to disappear. We need to address them. We take for granted that the same laws apply to the, that are applied to the outside world are applied to the online world. And yet, without algorithm regulations and even legislation, this is not the case at all. And as such, many people have 
changed their minds quite recently with recent events, changed their minds and opinions about certain items of news, the more this issue has come to light, the more they've realised that important information has disappeared. So law should really be the first priority before any programmed instructions for an algorithm and should even come before marketing profit Algorithms can perform calculations, can solve problems, which may eventually include telling a human what to program in as an algorithm in the first place. But the side of algorithm we're most familiar with is um, that it organises our social media feeds, for example, and it offers us more of what we like without us even having to lift a lazy finger to type in the search bar. It's true to say that algorithms might even be geared to collecting our data and assisting us to buy things. I think we all know that. But if we are only ever being shown one point of view, then it's impossible for us to ever really utilise our legal right for informed consent. And I'm sure even in understanding this fundamental principle when it comes to online information, even our understanding of normal news media changes and our demands for normal news media changes. The algorithm goes much, much deeper, of course, and there is also the potential for misappropriation. Skewed programming of the algorithm without the correct legislation being in place, of course. There's also the potential for hacking. If you've been following me for a while, you will have undoubtedly seen various posts by me raising concerns that the algorithm may have been programmed to not suggest or offer my videos on YouTube, for example, or programmed to simply hold back my posts from other people's feeds. And I took it upon myself to try to contact the social media companies and platforms involved. But since there is no recognised pathway in place for ensuring that current outside world laws are complied with, well, it's led to a dead end street. I can't get to the bottom of it, which at the very least may indicate that discrimination is going unchecked or that the algorithm itself holds inaccurate data about me, about my sites. It's true to say that my sites do seem to be coming back to normal slowly but surely, but the point remains that I've been unable to access my own data or the data which is held about me, which is my legal right. I've certainly also had issues with the video view counting on YouTube, which, yeah, I mean, obviously you can go ahead and laugh at this moment. It isn't really a problem for me as I'm such a small outfit and an amateur. But if this is possible for the algorithm to mess with my views as a small person, then a larger business could also be affected quite significantly too. In fact, the algorithm could even be used as a tool for coercion. And thankfully, there are already laws in place for coercion. But how do we know those laws have been programmed in? There's no way to check it. There's no certificate to tell us this algorithm has been approved. And, in, and there's no way that we can look for that information for ourselves, which is not compliant with real world law proving that this is another matter entirely and getting an answer from the social media or online company is impossible and I mean they're not breaking the law because the law hasn't been written yet. I am a mere amateur pointing out a really big issue that may have simply been overlooked. Authentication is just as essential for algorithms as it is for online users themselves. I can't understand how this hasn't been flagged up before. Honestly, everyone, you and I, all of us, we need to wake up. 
we need to pay attention to this one and not just wait for that personal problem to arise. A personal problem that you won't be able to solve because the pathways are not there to support you. With AI coming along in leaps and bounds, this is a really important part of the entire online jigsaw too. For the purposes of safety, if nothing else, and there are other issues, but surely safety is the main thing. Apparently, there is something known as um, a transparency algorithm standard, and you should definitely look it up. It, to me, it's a bit woolly, and it's designed to make you think that someone is working on all of this really, really important stuff on your behalf. But I say it should have already been included in the DSA and in the online harms bill. And the fact that it hasn't been makes you inevitably, cynically, ask the question as to whether the people working to make these enactments and laws know enough about the subject of algorithms to do it efficiently. But at least we are noticing it and we're noticing noticing it now before it's too late. Algorithms are really quite a large chunk to have accidentally missed out. Finally, it seems sometimes as if, as people, as if we're being organised into bite-sized pieces, lanes, topics, tick boxes, perhaps for the purposes of making the algorithm work better, perhaps for the purposes of educating the algorithm. But here's the thing, human beings should not have to adapt to the algorithm, rather the algorithm should be learning to adapt to the human being. We as human beings are all more than one subject, one lane, one tick in a box. Tea breaks, for example, are all kinds of discussions. And just as we adapt our language and methods of teaching for our children, it becomes more expansive and inclusive with their growing up and their growing abilities and understanding of the world. The same should be true for developing an algorithm. Or we all become dumbed down and dull, single faceted tick boxes. Ooh, no thank you. I just want to reiterate once again, the algorithm could be misappropriated as um, a tool of coercion, a tool of psychological abuse, as a tool of propaganda. And I'd like to see how the governments are handling these issues, how they have handled these issues up until now. And I'm shutting up now. If I've missed anything or you know better, then, well, you know what to do by now. Let me know. Feedback is so welcome. And that's today's tea break. So cheers to you. Have a great day. Have a great tea break. Have a great week. Thanks for listening to me. And I'll see you soon. Bye.